Hi. Today I am going to discuss about a famous question that often comes out in exam that is description of an ulcer. Usually, there will be either a photograph of an ulcer or a real patient with an ulcer is given to you and the question is, describe the ulcer. If the candidate successfully described the ulcer characteristics, that means the candidate has passed. Then after that, the examiner will always ask some questions pertaining to the ulcer given. The ability of the candidate to answer satisfactorily will get him the extra marks. Let us say the candidate is unable to answer those extra questions but is able to describe the ulcer well, that means he is safe. So, the focus of this video is to make you pass first. To get distinction is another matter. So, let's go. When you are given an ulcer, the first thing that you would say is the location of the ulcer. You may take it to next level by commenting the demarcation or the size. If you can tell those characteristics, extra points may be awarded. For example, there is well demarcated ulcer on the tip of the right great toe. The next thing you would comment is the diameter of the ulcer and the depth. Bear in mind, the diameter and depth need not to be accurate. Examiner is not looking for accuracy of the measurement, he is looking can you roughly comment the depth and the diameter. If you can't comment the diameter, comment on the border. For example, it has a diameter of 2 cm and a punched out appearance or with well-defined borders. Something like that. The next thing to comment is about the base. What do I mean by that? I meant is the base clean and healthy, which is healthy pink color or, is the base necrotic that is black or, is it oozing with pus? If there is pus, you must comment about the pus a bit. Color and odor will do when you commenting about pus. For example, the ulcer has a necrotic base. Now you need to examine the surrounding of the ulcer. Important things that you must comment are the skin temperature, color, and pulses. You can also comment about peripheral sensation. An example for different answers are like, surrounding skin is cool and pale, and the dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial pulses are weak or, there is associated venous eczema and lipodermatosclerosis or, the surrounding skin is hyperkeratotic and there is reduced sensation peripherally. After describing the ulcer, the examiner wants you to come to a conclusion. The conclusion he is looking for is what type of ulcer is it? Is it venous, or arterial or neuropathic? This is very crucial, so the candidate must know the different characteristics of the ulcer. I will give you one small tip here. The tip is when the examiner states the question, you do not. I repeat do not pause in the middle. I am telling you, do not let the examiner to prompt you. If the examiner prompts you even once, your first impression drops. Your goal is to score full marks in the describing ulcer question without needed to prompt. Let me give you an A plus answer. It goes like this, there is a well demarcated ulcer on the tip of the right great toe. It has a diameter of 0.5 cm and a punched out appearance. The ulcer has a necrotic base. The surrounding skin is cool and pale, and the dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial pulses are weak. This lesion is characteristic of an arterial ulcer. As soon as you finish describing the ulcer, the examiner will definitely ask you questions pertaining to the ulcer. For example, he might ask you like, what are the questions that you would like to ask the patient or state investigations that you would order? Something like that. I am just giving an example. When you answer a particular investigation, always tell the reason. Don't wait for the examiner to prompt. For example, I would order complete blood picture to look for leukocytosis. Something like that. Don't answer like, I would order complete blood picture then complete silence. 
That is not right. Then, you need to read about related conditions. Usually the examiner likes to ask about pathophysiology, investigations and treatment modalities. However these are not the hard and fast rules, basically just be prepared for anything under the sun. As summary, if you are aiming to just pass ulcer type of question, make sure you can describe it properly without being prompted. I have linked an article on how you go about answering an ulcer question. Definitely check it out. Please like, comment and subscribe if you find this video useful, as this will motivate me into doing more videos like this. Don't forget you can request your biology or medicine topics via the Google form that is linked in the description below. Thank you and see you all in the next video.